Well, hello and welcome to Jonathan from the Heart. I'm Jonathan Asley of JonathanAsley.com and I'm so excited to be doing this short video for you today. Uh, our topic, um, how a fearful avoidant, how a man over 40 turns into a for, uh, fearful avoidant and how you can love him, how you can love him. <laughs> All right, um, really quickly, if you're brand new to my YouTube channel, please hit the subscribe button, hit the bell so you can be notified of new videos. And if any time during this video the content resonates with you, please hit that like button so I can be seen in the YouTube algorithms. Really quickly, these are my weekend videos I shoot out on my balcony, very similar to the videos I shoot in my private group called Midlife Love Mastery. This is a group you can have direct access to me on a regular basis, and based on the questions you post in the group, I shoot personalized videos just for you. So check out the link below to my video. VIP group and you can join for just seven dollars to get started all right so we're going to talk about how a fearful avoidant might fall in love and why this might happen to a man in his um, as he gets older so I've been thinking a lot about a lot of the different conversations in the dating mating and relating realm and one in particular uh, that I heard about recently or I was listening to one of my contemporaries talking about the benefits of dating older men Older men tend to be more secure in their life. Older men tend to be more financially stable. Older men might even be better lovers. And there's some advantages to dating older men. And what I mean by older men, I'm talking about people in midlife. And midlife is after baby making years and before retirement. Well, I should say midlife is that for women. <laughs> and when I'm pre predominant, when I say after baby making years, it's 42 to 69 is my primary demographic of women. Um, the thing is, a man, I guess, can make a baby up until 60 or 70 years old, if I think that's possible. So, um, But there's this belief that older men, and I've, I've spoken to women about this, they, women in their late 30s, early 40s, how they actually prefer dating men 20 years older, because they have this belief that these men are more mature, they're more experienced. And what's fascinating to me is that as we age, we actually may become even more dysfunctional as we age. I repeat that, we may become more dysfunctional for a variety of different reasons. And I'll talk about fearful avoidance in a second. And what's important to recognize is as we age, we, have, we might have more life experience which might give us more maturity. And at the same time, this life experience might affect us significantly emotionally that causes us to kind of curl inside ourselves and be less likely to actually be open to love. I repeat that, as we age, we might actually, what I mean by curl inside, we might become more and more afraid of love as we get older. In fact, I think in our 20s, we're probably at our prime state to actually open up to a really uh, to a relationship maybe in our 20s and 30s and as a person has and by the way ladies you know this you've experienced this if you've had one I'll say I'm going to use the word bad experience but if you've had one bad experience after another after another you may be less likely to trust love and that's what I want to lean in today so I want to actually read to you what a fearful avoidant is and we're going to talk about this for a moment and here's my trusty notes by the way <laughs> Individuals with fearful avoidant attachment are a combination of preoccupied and dismissive avoidant styles of insecure attachment. They believe that they are unlovable and they also don't trust other people to support and accept them. I want to read that again. They believe that they are unlovable and they don't trust other people to support and accept them because they think others will eventually reject them and then, then withdraw from the relationship. They may fear getting hurt, rejected, or abandoned by other people. This causes them to avoid getting close to a partner emotionally. Now, once you think about this for a moment, you know, it, it might be confusing because men, biologically speaking, come on strong when we're attracted to someone. You've heard the narrative, men are hunters, and you know, men love the chase, okay? And certainly that's true, but there's this misconception that men are hunting and chasing a fully committed relationship. This is why when I hear all my younger female contemporaries talk about, talk about men, I'm like, you don't get us. You think you do, but you don't. That's why I don't give advice about women. I give advice about men because I'm a man. I have gone through the emotional experiences 
of, of what I'm about to share. I've been through divorce. I've been through alimony, child support, visitation rights, family court. I'm going through erectile dysfunction. I'm going through all of the emotional effects that begin to happen as we age. Do you know what midlife crisis is? Is that awakening, is that a period of time where our, our blueprint of the way we thought our life would be collides with our reality, this idea, we had our own fantasies of where our lives might be like. And predominantly I'm speaking to, by the way, if you're in your 40s, 50s, or 60s, the predominant, roughly 75% of singles in this age demographic are divorced. And divorce has significant emotional effects on a person. And so I want to lean into this for a moment because understanding the fearful avoidant from as we age versus when, okay, so look, at I have my t-shirt that has Batman on it, okay? Now, if you know the story of Batman, you know, I believe Bruce Wayne at age 12, 10, 11, or 12, witnessed his parents being murdered, witnessed his parents being murdered. Now, that's an extreme example, but He's a perfect example of witnessing deep trauma. And what did he eventually become? A fearful avoidant when it came to relationships. I don't think the comic books really got into that, but certainly some of the movies and the narratives afterwards, certainly in um, the Christian Bale story, there's a real significant understanding of where his mental, his emotional and mental, where, well, his state of being was at. So that's the childhood trauma. What isn't discussed in many of the books and the and teachings is the adult traumas. And while there's a fantastic book, folks, if you haven't read the book, Attached by Amir Levine and Rachel Heller, this will help you understand what happens from their childhood perspective of love attachment style. And it's important to understand the differences. Anxious attachment style, avoidant attachment style, secure attachment style, and all the different variations within this. What isn't discussed and by the way, I am by no means an expert here, folks. Let me be clear about something. I am talking about a topic that I am not an expert, like a therapist is, on the actual topic. I'm just giving you my perspective as I see it and what I, I believe happens to so many men and women as we get into our 40s, 50s, and 60s is we can actually become more and more fearful of love. The, the trauma of divorce the trauma of, when I use the word trauma, I don't mean, you know, this, you know, like what Bruce Wayne experienced. I'm not talking about that kind of trauma. I'm talking about just going through a nasty divorce is a traumatic event. Or God forbid someone experiences like what I had. Most of you know, I lost a child. I lost my 19 year old son. Talk about what, think of the emotional effects that has, has happened in my life. And I can't even begin to understand you know, really the complexities of how this affects me in my daily life. And maybe that's the primary reason why I'm single right now. Maybe I'm afraid to put myself out there because there's a feeling of abandonment, a feeling of rejection. And not that he meant to do that. I cognitively understand that. But imagine you loving someone so much and then they're gone. And many of you know what I'm talking about when you've actually given your heart to a man and they break up or disappear or whatnot. It can be, it can, think of the emotional effects on every human being right now. And you know what's not discussed? Yes, thankfully there's more discussions on therapy than ever before. And certainly there's workshops like the Hoffman Process and Insight Seminars that are great institutions for helping individuals love on themselves but I'm here to be a champion of something more important, and that's you loving on yourself. And by the way, in a moment, I'll talk about how to love a fearful avoidant. But what I wanna to talk to you right now is about you loving yourself. When I lost my son, I felt so compelled to write a book about loving oneself. And if you're not familiar with my book, I'm gonna pitch it right now. <laughs> my book is What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? It's a very simple journey of personal development, self-help, and spiritual work to actually become more of a complete human being because you don't need a man or a woman to make yourself complete. And yet here in the United States, we are suckling on the nipple of, I need you to love me so I can feel good about myself. I need you to love me so I can feel good about myself. I need you to love me so I can feel good about myself. Folks, I'm here to invite you all to love on yourself and then share from that overflow. And let me be clear, 
I do this work daily. It's a daily practice and I'm still just partially filling my cup up of love. Better to start with a cup that has got some love in it than no love at all. And part of the, one of the primary reasons why many of you women choose fearful avoidant men, it's because it's actually familiar to you. And most likely one of your parents was a avoidant personality and if you're not, or attachment style, excuse me. And if you're not familiar with the book, Getting the Love You Want by Harbell Hendricks and Helen Hunt, by the way, there's a link below to uh, Jonathan Recommends Books. This is, talks about what's known as the imago, why we oftentimes choose people like one or both of our parents. And what frustrates me about dating advice in particular, a lot of the pseudo crappy dating advice, you folks, you know how much I can't stand feminine energy just leaning back and that's all going to be the magic. That's going to be the magic to make the guy lean in. Well, when we're dealing with a predominantly emotionally dysfunctional world, we have a predominantly emotionally dysfunctional, at least here in the United States, I can't speak for other, I said the world. But quite frankly, a big chunk of the world is in poverty. You know, here in the United States, we should be thankful for what's, what I believe is a lot of abundance. We get the benefit. We have the luxury to actually work on our emotions. Imagine you're in a country where literally just getting food and water and shelter for the day is the primary goal of just getting by. We don't have those constraints, at least most of us here. We have the luxury to work on our emotions. And yet we, but, and by the way, we are on, we are suckling on the nipple of victim consciousness here in the United States. I mean, it is just riddled with victim consciousness. It's always blaming someone else for a lot in life instead of looking within. Complaining frequently. I made a, a friend of mine and I made a commitment uh, yesterday that we are going to now spend, our goal is to, to be accountable to each other if we're acting in a complaining fashion and we have to continually say five positive things every day to any complaint and we made a commitment to each other to hold each other accountable because our words matter. The words we say out of our mouth and the words in our head matter and the poison that we are feeding ourselves matters. And this is true of the dating advice out there. This is why I'm, I, I, I criticize a lot of, I don't even want to call them contemporaries, a lot of pseudo people offering advice because they're not thinking of it from a genuine human behavior. It's a lot of just talking about men are provider protectors and you should just pay for dates and that's just going to be all the magic fairy dust to make the relationship work. Do you realize most couples don't even know how to make a relationship work? Most couples don't know true intimacy true intimacy. This is why I want you to check out the book Emotional Intimacy by Robert Masters where you can actually get to know someone at a heart-centered level. This is, this is important stuff if you want to be in, a, in a, at least a, a functional relationship let alone a juicy, delicious relationship I talk about. The juicy, delicious relationship is going to require some Herculean work on both people's part. And everything I'm saying here is true for men and women alike. There is just as many, I, mean, I don't know statistically speaking, there are fearful avoidant women and there's fearful avoidant men. So how to date a fearful avoidant person? I think it's important to recognize, and by the way, I created some notes here, so let me pull up my notes. And by the way, I'm not suggesting you should stay with a fearful avoidant. I mean, if, if, if a point, basically some of the characteristics of fearful appointment, they come close, they pull away. They come close, they pull away. And fearful avoidants aren't bad people. It's just harder for them to love. This is why, and by the way, oftentimes fearful avoidants are characterized as narcissists. And this is then what happens is a person who can't love is then labeled a narcissist. And then there's a narrative by the, the oftentimes the woman complaining about the guy that he's a narcissist. And then that feeds in a loop for yourself and you are doing yourself no good by, by watching video after video after video about narcissism. It's not healthy. What you should be watching is uplifting videos of how to, how to genuinely love on yourself. And I know there's some smudgelings of that in some of these videos, 
Turn your attention to videos that actually uplift you and not bring you down because you're gonna attract more of that in your life. And what I mean is you're gonna start seeing more and more and more of it, which effectively is attracting it. And then you've shot yourself in the foot. Because if you really want to shift a narrative of love, I'm going to recommend a book right now. I haven't recommended this in a while. The Mastery of Love by Don Miguel Ruiz. The Mastery of Love by Don Miguel Ruiz. I highly recommend checking this book out for yourself. Because ultimately, if you want to change the narrative of the person you're with, they're going to have to do work and you're going to have to do work. And it starts by this. I have my notes. Communicate with your no words, not tantrums, okay? It's about building trust in a relationship. It's about building trust. And I highly recommend these three books where I'm gonna talk about. First off is Nonviolent Communication by Marshall Rosenberg, okay? I want you to check out these two short books, How to Build Trust in a Relationship and Couples Communication Guide. And lastly, this is an amazing book. I hear you. The Surprisingly Simple Skills Behind Extraordinary Relationships. Why do you want to read these books? And by the way, ladies, if you're with this man who's a fearful avoidant, you're both going to have to do this together. If he wants to have a, a relationship with you, then you both should join hands and say, let's, and now you don't have to go to couples counseling therapy. You can actually go to workshops and say, let's hold hand and build this relationship together. And if he's not willing to do that, do you really want to invest years of your life holding out for somebody? It's going to require them to do the work as well. And I'm speaking to you women that are fearful avoidance because communication is key and not tantrums, anger, or combative communication. Next, it's going to take practice and patience when he pulls away from you because that's the toughest part because we're feeling our own rejection. Number three, look at his intentions. This is key. Does he, does he genuinely seem like he wants to fully commit a relationship with you? Or is he just using you at his beck and call? If that's the case, then move on. Number four, support and not fix. Again, this isn't about fixing him. This is about being a team together to, to co-create something together. And let me just say this, avoidance need and want love just as much as you do. They do. And if, they, if you two genuinely, genuinely love each other and you genuinely want to make a relationship work, instead of just spend, there's people that want to spend time with you and there's people that want to grow with you. I'm only suggesting choosing the men who want to grow with you versus the ones who want to spend time with you. Because ultimately, why does this happen at midlife? Because the older we get, the more trauma, emotional trauma we experience, and that makes human beings more and more fearful of love. And yes, there are anxious people out there, but the reality is, is the vast majority of people are becoming, I mean, more and more closed off to love, and it's time to break free. And I want to recommend one more book before I bring up on this. Barbara DeAngelis wrote an amazing book, How to Make Love All the Time. These have great suggestions of how to build that juicy, delicious relationship together. So I invite you guys, and I invite the men that you're in relationship with to watch this video and to the guys who are out there or watching this, look at, if you have a really great woman in your life, hold her hand and say, I want to grow with you and we're going to get through this. And I'm going to do my part. I'm going to do my work. And I invite you to hold space and do your work. And together, we can hold hands. We can hold hands together and get, make through, and really work on this relationship. And so we can experience true joy, true jo love, true partnership with one another. Are you willing to do that? I hope so. All right, folks, I'd like to hear your thoughts on this. Please post a comment below if this resonated with you not. Please share this to your, with your friends. If you'd like some support, check out the link to a discovery call with me if you'd like to talk to me directly. Um, check out my link to my group, Midlife Love Mastery. Join me I'm on Instagram. Uh, follow my podcast, all those juicy, delicious things. I would really love your support. All right, I'm going to wrap up this video as I always do. First off, giving myself a big, gigantic Jonathan Merrick of self-love. I'm going to reach into the camera and give you a hug of love if that's okay. I'm going to ask you to turn to someone, a pet, a teddy bear, a pillow, and give it or them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love. 
let's face it, we could all use more love in our lives. Thanks a bunch. Bye-bye now.